you're like a perfect person to talk to your research in lipid metabolism in the realm of neuroscience and how it affects our brain. We hear the phrase that the brain is made out of fat. About 60% of the brain is made out of fat. Is that true? Yes. I like to say the brain's half fat, half protein. 60% is a very reasonable estimate. It varies. The brain's almost as fat as your body fat. There's a big difference though. Your body fat has what we call a, a triglyceride. Some of these can have a fatty acid attached to them. And there's three big categories of fatty acids. One is called saturated fatty acids, things like butter and some of the fats in meats or palm oil kind of thing. And then we've got the monounsaturated fatty acids. And then we've got polyunsaturated fatty acids. The polyunsaturates, some of them are essential. You have to consume in the diet. And one type are called omega-3s and one type are called omega-6s. And those are chemical terms that depend where the first double bond is. Is it in the three position of the molecule or is it in the sixth position of the molecule? What are some of the fats that are incredibly important in those first two or five years of life as far as dietary structure and components are concerned? One of the fats I'm very interested in is this omega-3 DHA. So if you consume a low amount of it, you can have lower levels in your brain. And that makes it very important nutritionally speaking. Poor diets or good diets can manipulate its levels. So as your brain develops, you get myelination. Myelination is saturated fats and monounsaturated fats fats being wrapped around the neurons. And so this is an extremely important process. If you look at human milk, it's actually loaded with them. During the phase of our life when the brain is not, you know, myelinating anymore and we're not really in that process of neurogenesis, there's evidence that when people consume too much saturated fats, for example, that could result in vascular compromise and vascular damage leading to white matter disease and vascular cognitive impairment, etc. Consumption of unsaturated fats, specifically polyunsaturated fats, is important because it can actually help with that cognitive resilience. Is that what you see in your studies and in your line of work as well? Yes, I do. The polyunsaturates, especially the omega-3s, were associated with better outcomes in terms of neurodegenerative diseases. I'll just throw one little catch is these association studies, these correlational studies, they work out pretty well in general, but it's been hard to do show that in randomized controlled trials for a variety of reasons. So I just think we have to be careful with the interpretation of some of the correlational studies because the reductionists can run wild with them a little bit. If you could describe the metabolism of omega-3s for us and how they're needed by the brain. Sure. In the brain, roughly 10% of the fatty acids are omega-3s. And I emphasize the S there on purpose. It's almost exclusively one type of omega-3, this molecule called DHA. One wild thing about these omega-3s is that they're in the membrane, they get released, and they get converted to a series of bioactive molecules and get consumed or sometimes they get released from the membrane and they just come right back into the membrane. The sister to the omega-3 DHA is an omega-6 called arachidonic acid and arachidonic acid is a real famous fatty acid. It comes out of the membrane in response to signals in the brain and some of it gets metabolized to these very famous molecules like prostaglandins and if you take an aspirin you stop that step from happening. Some of the products of arachidonic acid promote inflammation and a lot of the drugs that are used in anti-inflammation stop that process. So you've got high levels of these in the brain that do a bunch of things. They say, hey, something happened here. We need to grow this synapse this way or that way, or something's happening here. We need a little bit of inflammation to clear this out. Where the omega-3s get really interesting nutritionally is there's kind of two ways to get this DHA into your brain. One is you eat it in the diet and it's enriched in fatty fish. So fish oil supplements, algae, and marine fish. There's a redundant way to get it and that is to consume its precursor and that's in green leafy vegetables. It's in things like flaxseed, chia seed. You take that, you bring it to your liver again and your liver does a series of things and turns it into DHA, sends it out into your blood and then you can take that up into your brain and help maintain your brain DHA levels with that precursor alpha linolenic acid which is often called ALA for short. 
What are your thoughts on the different studies that have come out that shows that vegans and vegetarians having very low omega-3 fatty acid percentage in their diet, do you think that they actually may be at a higher risk of developing issues later on compared to those who consume fish? The data, as I'm seeing it right now, is we don't see the vegans and vegetarians jumping out at us, at least, from an epidemiological perspective as having some of these issues. We're not seeing the vegans and vegetarians showing up with neurological disorders, at least not dramatically in the epidemiology. There's some suggesting that they're protected in that respect. I will concede, though, some of this is complicated because what we can show you is that if you show me a vegan and vegetarian subject, on average, they'll have lower blood levels of DHA than omnivores or fish consumers. And then I can show you correlational data where fish consumers have lower levels of neurological disorders, right? Vegans and vegetarians don't fit the model right now. And a lot of us want to figure that out. Why? Why is that? People say, just eat more fish. And there's ethical issues around fish consumption, but there's environmental issues around fish consumption. Okay, so how much DHA do you need? Oh, I think it's 100 milligrams. Let's make it a gram to be safe. My colleagues have done these napkin calculations, and there's not enough fish in the ocean to do this, right? And if we go around and tell everybody just eat more fish, we got a problem. And people are working on solutions. Algal DHA, which I think is kind of a brilliant solution, but it's not cheap, so it might not be for everybody. That needs some more research, obviously. What are your thoughts on supplement intake and brain health, and specifically DHA intake and brain health? My colleagues can do really nice studies where they supplement. They can show that some of those cognitive improvements that last for at least five years of age. I think the associative studies are pretty clear that people who have higher blood DHA levels or have higher fish consumption tend to have improvements in these outcomes. But I worry a little bit about then somebody saying, okay, I'm not going to eat fish. I'm just going to take a supplement instead. Because one of the things that I like to do with my class is I show them a, a picture of a piece of tuna. I put junk food around it and it looks really bizarre, right? And then you show them a picture of tuna with a glass of wine. That makes a bit more sense. And then you have it with a little bit of a salad. The catch is fish changes the way you eat. Some people say, I'm just going to take a supplement. And I worry about our reduction is saying, well, it's the DHA. So if I take this pill, I'm good. And I can have my burger and fries and I don't need to go to the gym because I've got this covered, right? Obviously I'm being a little too extreme, but that's how I see it. I wouldn't tell people not to consume these things, but don't take the supplement and say, well, I'm not going to consume the ALA and I'm not going to worry about the omega-6 ratio. And I'm not going to exercise as much because I'm taking the supplement, right? Don't isolate just your diet. You can do exercise. You can do all these kinds of other things going forward and keep the whole lifestyle healthy. Learning a second language, easier said than done. Playing music, these things show up quite nicely as well. Diet's not just about omega-3s. There's things called the mind diet. So diets that are actually plant-based with blueberries show up reasonably well in the correlational literature as being helpful for your brain. So these are tools to keep in mind. <music> 